Hey everybody, I have all three of my Spinillusion wheels in one place at one time, so I am going to try to film my uh, comparison <laughs> video for these. It, it will feature the King Bee, the um, the new Bullfrog, and my Polywog with attachments. So if you are curious about any of those, this is the video for you. And uh, yeah, just as a dealer, I do get, you know, of course, one of the most common questions is always, uh, you know, which one's right for me. Like, I know I want this brand, but you know, this is what I spin. This is, you know, what I like and kind of what I'm looking for. So uh, I'm really excited about doing this particular video. And I was anxiously awaiting the bullfrog for this reason, because I think it'll answer a lot of questions. So without further ado, here you go. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just pretty much going to start at the bottom and work my way up and do a comparison. So that's what we're doing. So this one here is the Polywog, and it is the smallest. So as far as the bases go, you can see this one does not have the fold-out footbed, but I can play chair over so you can see my feet in action here. Your heels go on the floor, and it does have the smaller uh, toe treadles. Which I don't mind at all. I actually really like the toe treadles on the Polywog, so uh, this doesn't bother me at all. But uh, some people I know are concerned about here. I actually have to put the band up there. Some people are concerned about that. I find it very comfortable. My heels rest very comfortably on the floor, and uh, I, I mean, the Polywog basically spins itself. So, um, you know, I mean, it's not like you're really smashing with your feet or anything. So I find the toe treadles great. So that is uh, the base for that one. The bullfrog is seen here, and the king bee have uh, very similar fold-out bases, and they just fold up like that. They both work the same way. And um, this is actually, so the way this works is, I'm scooting my chair around, your feet go on the base, which brings your heel up a little bit, and they do have, you can see like the same size, think the king bee might be slightly bigger and by slightly bigger I mean like the width of my pinky so like not anything too serious they both have bigger pedals and your heels go on the plate and then you know you treadle that way and once again all of the spinolution wheels it's not like I had a single treadle wheel before that was a different brand and there's definitely much more like pushing involved these all and I have bad ankles believe it or not uh since I've always had bad ankles, so that was one of the things that I really love about these since I'm a production spinner, was they're really, if you have uh, not the world's greatest joints, they're good for you. <laughs> so um, you really, even though, like I said, the pedals aren't ginormous, they uh, are very easy to spin, so you're not like, you know, really smashing and getting a leg work out there. So that's kind of the base situation on all three. So then to go back to the wheel, and I'll take you on the tour of my floor here. On the Polywog's gonna have your smallest wheel. It's definitely, uh, it helps with its portability because it could fit in more things and it's just got the solid with the spoke design, which you can choose to get it plain, but I really like the spoke design. And then um, wheel. And then the, you know, it's driven with the little treadles and the ball bearing in the middle. The wheel on the Bullfrog is looks a lot like the Echo. It is definitely bigger, and I'll put them next to each other here in a minute. So you definitely have more power per push um, on the, the Bullfrog than the Polywog. And actually, here, I will get them over next to each other. Haha, -ha, that's what you wanted to see, right? So we have, you can see the Bullfrog's wheel is substantially larger. So you're just gonna get more, like I said, oomph per push. On, on that. I think that would be most useful if, um, like two plying, the one thing with the polywog, and you've seen in my other videos, when two plying, um, especially with bulkier weight yarn, and I mean, it's like totally not a big deal, but, and I mean, I'm talking on like the four ounce bobbin, I do adjust the tension up just slightly as I'm filling up the bobbin, just to help give it a little bit more pull with the smaller wheel. This one, I, uh, you know, obviously you wouldn't have that problem just because it's bigger and uh, more powerful wheel and it's got these giant bobbins. So then the wheels on the King Bee are obviously totally different and weird, which is why we love it. It actually has two wheels. So the uh, foot pedals are here. It's got this like lobster claw action that opens here and the ball bearings are in here. We kind of squeeze that back together. And that turns, you can adjust the gears here. So this one has gear adjustments down here and then gear adjustments here, and then more gear adjustments on the top. So if you're into gear adjustments, the B is for you. 
But um, the, also the benefit of having the little wheels on this one is it folds into a box. So, you know, you don't have like a uh, big wheel to deal with so that's more compact. So that's the situation. <clears throat> I used until here recently when I just got the Bullfrog. This King Bee has been my full-time major production wheel. So, I mean, this is... You know, don't let the two smaller wheels fool you. I, this King Bee is a workhorse. I have made just so much yarn. <laughs> so much yarn on this King Bee, like constantly every day. So, you know, it has held up great. It's wonderful. I've taken it everywhere. So don't let, you know, like, oh, it has two smaller wheels throw you off. It's definitely a lot of power per push. And then you've got more gears up there. Oh, well, I'm jumping ahead of myself. So, okay, so that's the wheel situation on all of them. The Polywog has got this, uh, I do have this one shown with the accelerator on here. So if you get just the base model, you will imagine this away. So it would be slightly shorter and um, it just bolts on, you know, the side, whether or not you've got the attachment or just the head, it, you know, easily bolts on there, which is nice because I can actually put this thing in a duffel bag. So, um, you know, you can unbolt it the top just comes off and you stick the whole thing in a duffel bag and away you go. So that's the situation with how that one works. This one, as you've seen in my other uh, video, just reviewing the Bullfrog, so I will not go into great time on this now, actually folds. So you push this button here and then this handle rotates that way. So then this whole head rotates down. And like I said, check out my Bullfrog review for more on that. Whereas this one doesn't fold it, you unbolt it. So uh, the, the one pro, well, I think it's a big pro with this one that folds, is you don't have to take the drive band off. Um, so you just fold it. This one, obviously, if you're taking it apart, you know, the drive band is going to get kind of, you know, it won't still be engaged, which isn't a huge deal. You just bolt it back together and stick your drive band back on. So, you know, not a huge deal, but definitely a, uh, a plus, I think, for the foldability of the bullfrog versus it just coming apart. I was really excited about that. This one is, uh, it folds. So, like this whole part, and here, let's see if I can, uh, you pull this peg out, and then this whole top part folds down. And I will uh, show that at the end, because I don't want to damage it while I'm walking around holding this camera. Um, but yeah, so that one totally different. The whole top folds down into a box and then it has this convenient little carry handle that you can tote off with you. So King Bee, super awesome. This one also has a handle as you see right here. So when it's folded, it's really easy to just pick this up and carry it. Or I also been using it fully upright just as kind of if I'm moving it from one place to the other, you can hold it there and it's sturdy. So that's a breakdown of the middle and then the tops. Let's see. So the Polly has comes with the four ounce top, which is the speediest little thing in the whole world. And um, if you are into fine yarn, lace weight yarn, or you're just a beginner, like it is so fast. So I really love the four ounce size just because it, it's quick, it's easy. And you know, it's not, you don't get a lot of extra like momentum built up in there behind like a giant bobbin. But, um, and then it's got, mine is older, so it does not have a golden whirl. Any new ones would have a golden whirl. So that's what's up with that one. The Poly, of course, you can, can get the 12-ounce um, the upgrade for the big 12-ounce head if you wanted. So I'll probably do another video just on these two with this one with the 12-ounce head. This one, of course, has the giant 16-ounce bobbins. And, oh yeah, this one, side note, comes with three 4-ounce bobbins. So that's what's up with that one. Sorry. This one also comes with three bobbins, which I love, and it comes with the three giant 16 ounces, which I think is a fantastic deal, because uh, just ordering the bobbins by themselves, like, even as a dealer, I'm always like, oh, eh, I wasn't expecting that. So, um, you know, having the three <laughs> bobbins come with it, I think, is tremendous, uh, especially the bigger sizes, you know, just because, I mean, it's a lot of work, you know, it's nice wood, and it's all finished, and, you know, I mean, they're super nice bobbins, so I was glad that it came with three. This one, it will feel, all new wheels will have the golden world. My other two are just older. And then this is the 16 ounce flyer head. Neither, uh, this one does not change. So you can't like get a different head for it and put like an eight ounce on it. Like it is what it is. Um, just like the polywog, you can change between the four ounce. And then if you got the upgrade, you could do the 12 ounce. But neither of these are going to be 
Well, actually, neither of these are going to be like the Echo or Mach 3 or Firefly where you can change out, you know, get different sizes, you know, like 4 ounce and 16 ounce or whatever. Like They kind of are what they are. And so that is the bobbin situation there, and this is just driven by the main drive band. This one, the King B, is an 8 ounce, which I love the 8 ounce bobbin size. Um, if I'm happy to have the 16 ounce now, but honestly, I don't... For all the yarn I spin, the 8 ounce is the bobbin I've used the most. I've never had any trouble with it. They're kind of the perfect, not too big, not too small. Um, so I really, I'm a big fan of the 8 ounce. If you want 4 ounce and more gears, the Queen Bee would be what you would want. But you can't switch between 4 ounce and 8 ounce or 16 ounce on the Bees. Like, they are what they are. So just buy either Queen Bee, the King, or the Worker, depending on what you want. So we have 8 ounce. 16 ounce and a four ounce so that's kind of the top so i i think that's the main breakdown of just showing you things i will get on here and give you my final thoughts here in a minute okay so final thoughts on these and of course if there was any detail that i did not go into um just comment <laughs> and be like hey i want to see more on the whatever and i will film the whatever for you so no worries and um but final comments like i said these wheels I get asked a lot of questions about. I would say it's probably between these three. So this is not uh, taken into consideration, you know, if you want an electric one or if you want like a big giant showpiece one. <laughs> like obviously you probably wouldn't be considering these three. But I'd say these and then let's pretend there's an echo here even though there's not. Um, if you want portability, the, uh, the King B... Honestly, any three of these would be great. If you're short on space and you really need like maximum portability, then I would say either uh, the B or the Polywog would be awesome. The um, just because they are the Polywog's so light and like you can literally stick it in a duffel bag. The King B is great because it folds into a box. <laughs> so um, that also, if you have like little kids or dogs or. <clears throat> excuse me, you live in a tiny house and you just really want something that's going to be kind of like protect itself and can be like shoved under a bed, then um, the King B would, you'd probably really like the foldability on that. The, um, the Bullfrog also would be very portable. So it weighs more. The King B I think weighs like 14 pounds. The Bullfrog, I don't know the exact weight off the top of my head right now, but I feel like it's maybe a little bit more than the King B. I might be lying. But um, it's definitely, it's got that bigger wheel, you know, it's just, it's, it's heavier. So if, like, carrying heavy things is not for you, um, then maybe not so portable. But, I mean, it folds, it uh, has the lazy cate that uh, protects itself, which I didn't show anything on that. I will add a part on the lazy cate. <laughs> but, um, you know, it has the lazy cate that folds. Uh, so, I mean, it's definitely very portable depending on the size of your car, whether or not you have kids and dogs, that sort of thing. Um... As far as with the Echo, not as portable. So if you're looking at an Echo, I would def between like an Echo and a Bullfrog, I'd go with a Bullfrog if portability is remotely your thing. As far as um, spinning, like what type of yarn, like I said, I have been very happy with the 8-ounce bobbin, which is, you know, compared to some of the Spinolution bobbins, not that big. <laughs> so I spin a lot of bulky weight yarn, two-ply yarn, art yarn, I also spin thin yarn. I'm a very versatile spinner, but I'm probably most known for my, like, bulky yarn. So I've been very happy with my 8-ounce bobbins. That being said, with the 16-ounce bobbins, <laughs> you would have even more uh, room for that. So like obviously greater yardage. Like if you're somebody who likes to spin like, I'm going to process this fleece and make myself a sweater, then, you know, having less ends to weave in would be great. So having the bigger bobbin just for larger amounts of yardage her bobbin, I can definitely see that being a benefit on the bullfrog. Or if you're like really into like, I want all the locks, <laughs> you know, just really big yarn with lots of locks and things that stick off from it, the 16 ounce bobbin would be really nice. Um, I don't personally feel that I would ever need anything bigger than a 16 ounce bobbin, but that's me. And the four ounce bobbin is fabulous because it is so, and you'll see what I mean if you're trying them, the bigger bobbins just get a little bit more momentum behind them. So, you know, they're just, even though they're very smooth and very fast, I don't mean to be like misleading on that, but the four ounce bobbin, man, it just flies. So if you're really into like lace weight, smaller yardage, but just like thinner stuff, or um, I, four ounce is probably, you'd love that polywog with the, uh, with or without the accelerator, honestly. 
if you are into, um, you, you know, like I said, thinner yarns. You can put uh, four ounces of two ply bulky on a four ounce bobbin. <laughs> I have another video to prove it. So, um, you know, it can be done with uh, thicker yarns, but I would definitely say if your main deal is like worsted to thinner than the four ounce bobbin, you know, if you're not wanting to drop a ton of money or you're starting out on spinning, four ounce bobbin's awesome. So, um, the one benefit of the polywog is, like I said, you can kind of like choose your own adventure <laughs> on it as far as, you know, it's a good introductory price and then you can also get the bigger heads. So those are just some things to consider. I would definitely think about like what type of spinner are you, what type of yarn do you want to make and how important is uh, portability to you. And um, like I said, of course, please contact me <laughs> and I will help you, uh, you know, weigh the pros and cons on a personal note. So uh, I won't make this video any longer. But anyhow, so that's what's up with kind of my feelings on the three of them. If I've missed any major points, feel free to let me know. And like I said, I'm happy to answer individual questions. So hit me up. <laughs> so hope that helped. Bye. Real quick, where the lazy cake pegs go. On the B, they have this handy little hidey hole that then when you collapse it into a box, it actually all locks in there, which I love because then you don't have to worry about them falling out. On this one, and it did take me a minute to find it, there is a slit down here on the side, and so you would put all three of your pegs in there at a diagonal if you didn't want them on the top. This one, and this is the 16 ounce peg, I just stuck it over here for demonstration purposes, on the polywog, whether on the four ounce head or the 12 ounce head, and so just imagine the shorter, they go in this cute little hole here on the top.